is Anna Nassir. I'm Ken Albala, and we're going to be making a pizza for you today, all the way from scratch, as much as we can, the details of which are in our cookbook. It's the lost art of real cooking. And we're going to take you through the process today, basically grinding the grain, making a dough. Um, making cheese. And then um, some tomato sauce from fresh tomatoes, and we'll throw it all together and see what happens, maybe throw in some meat and vegetables and whatever strikes our fancy. So if you don't have your own um, wheat growing, which would take an acre or two, you can buy wheat berries. These are hard white wheat berries. They're cheaper in bulk, but I think this is a really good brand. You can get one of these mills, a hand kern. It basically replicates prehistoric technology. I mean, this is, this is you know, from the time of Fertile Crescents. <laughs> This has got two different um, finenesses of flour. There's a very fine wheat right here, which is what we want to make bread and stuff with. There's also this coarse, coarser um, ground wheat. So what we're going to do is sieve it. You can see that they're just going to stay up on top. If you like this stuff you can save. It works just like cream of wheat. Here you have nice flour on the bottom. I think we're about ready to make some dough. This is about three cups, but that'll make a nice sized pizza. I'm going to be adding some sourdough starter to it so there'll be more flour in there. And then I will add some water. I'm going to start using my hands now to finish kneading this. Because the flour is fairly coarse, it'll take a little bit longer to incorporate all the liquid. So it starts out feeling a little stickier than it will at the end. And do keep in mind that measuring fresh ground flour is quite different from measuring regular store-bought flour. It tends to have a lot more moisture in it and also it tends to be coarser. And both of those things will really affect how much water it can absorb. And it's whole, whole, whole wheat. There's nothing taken out of this. So right. it's, you know, it's of course going to be brown and nutty. The dough is getting really smooth. I think it's about there. It's, we've got good gluten formation. It has a smooth top. It's stretchy and elastic. Rub it in a little flour to make sure it doesn't stick to the bowl. You can just put that in there. I'll put this in here, put a towel over it, and just let it go. This will probably take at least two hours, I think. Really nothing easier than making cheese. It just takes a little time and patience. I couldn't find raw milk this morning, so I bought goat milk instead. So we'll make a quick sort of chev out of this. Um, it's ultra, the only kind you can buy is ultra pasteurized, but I think it'll, it should work fine. Um, all I'm really going to do, let me just walk you through the process first, is heat this up to about 90 degrees, add some rennet. One, two, three, four, five, six drops to that, um, to half gallon of milk we're using. Stir it. That's really just to distribute the rennet. Um, and then put it through a cheesecloth lined strainer until all the whey drips out. We'll save that. That's a good, good thing. But the solids will be in there. We'll salt them and... I think it'll be ready to go on a pizza. So we're gonna make some tomato sauce now. Um, it's a very quick, very easy tomato sauce. It's the one that's described in the book. And it really takes about 10 minutes. And I know people think, oh, I've gotta simmer this for hours, or I've gotta do whatever. This is um, it's just a serious, very simple one. So I'm just gonna cut them roughly into eighths. I'm gonna crank up the heat on this pan, get it as hot as possible. Some nice herbs. A little garlic. You don't even have to peel them. Just throw them right into the whole thing. I think you can use a really good olive oil, extra virgin for cooking, absolutely. Um, this can't be made without the olive oil. It's, it's essential to the flavor. It's, it's part of the whole thing. We want it super hot so the tomatoes don't boil. We actually want to let them burn a little on the outside. Putting in some oil, toss those tomatoes in, and I don't want to stir them. really don't want to crowd the pan up too much either, because then they will boil. Okay, so I'm just going to add the herb, add a bay leaf, and I like to actually break the uh, ribs on the bay leaf so you can smell it. It smells a lot nicer mm. that way. Yeah. Add in just a little salt, you can add more later if you need. Pepper, and again, see, I'm not touching it. They're just beginning to blister. Take another minute. So. And the fun part. Wow. 
Wine is absolutely essential, and I'm using a nice local Van Ruten, an old vine Zin from 2008. The wine will, will cause everything to break down very quickly. Okay, and then this should just be, these are almost soft, almost ready to go through. It's nice to use plum tomatoes. Um, they tend to be drier, which means they have a greater density of flesh. There's less moisture to cook out of them. But with this technique, you'll get a lot less liquid, and that means less cooking time and fresher flavor. Pass this through the food mill. Pour this in. And you can really just dump the whole thing in. There's a blade on the bottom that pushes the whole tomatoes down through holes in the, in, it's like a sieve bottom here. And that just mashes them and makes a really smooth paste. At the end, I'm going to be left with some thick skins and herbs and things on top. And underneath, I'll have smooth sauce. Okay. Okay. Just show the sauce. If you want to, this is really nice. I think you could thicken it up a little bit more if you wanted. Just put it back in the pan and reduce some of the liquid out. So we're going to check on the cheese now. Um, we just turned on a little bit of heat to help it curdle and... Um, it definitely curdled. You can see the whey and chunks of curd floating here. The white chunk here that separated out is the protein in the milk that has now coagulated and left behind this kind of whitish, clearish liquid, which is the whey. We're just going to put it in this china hat strainer with a couple of layers of cheesecloth, and um, that should separate the two very nicely. And it should take maybe about, I don't know, an hour to drain. This, should, this is a very quick cheese, and... Um, you know, it will taste fairly fresh when it goes on the pizza. Okay, see how this has turned into a nice cheese here? So this dough has been rising a little bit. It's a little bit softer. Um, we didn't expect it to grow very much because it, it is a whole grain bread with a sourdough starter and only given a few hours to rise in the afternoon. What do is roll out the dough. Um, crumble this on. I usually like to put the cheese on first rather than the sauce because otherwise the cheese will, the whole thing will slide off. Little drizzles. This is just some salami that I made gosh about five months ago maybe. Um, it's been cured and some herbs for the top. This is just fresh oregano. I'm just putting some uh, cooked zucchini on top of this pizza just to give it a little more green. These are some olives from the front yard. This is also in the book. You soak them in water until the bitterness was gone and then put them in brine. And they're about four months old. About that. Keep this one vegetarian. The other one has some meat on it. It's at 550 degrees. We threw in some ice cubes to get some lift on the dough. edges are nice and golden brown. It looks like the cheese is melting and the top is getting some browning on. Let's take them out. That looks nice. Yeah. It looks crisp. crisp. Right architecture. <laughs> it's got to be eaten so hot that it burns the roof of your mouth. Sends you into paroxysms of pain. <laughs> the stone ground crust, tomato sauce we made, the cheese we made in an afternoon, salami, and some oregano. And there's not much else on this. Some brasola. Um, it's still too hot to put in my mouth. You can find out more about the lost art of real cooking and the recipes that we used this afternoon on the Penguin website.